it consumes you. But she didn't want to be like that. If she would have fought Haman, the enemy, on her own, she would have lost. Mm -hmm. She invited the king. And she sat at the same table with the king and with the enemy. And you know who, who's, uh, who's, uh, uh, her attention was focused on who? The king. The king. So the enemy got to sit right there. Watch her worship the king. Watch her praise the Lord, of God Almighty. This is what she did. The, when we worship our God, in spite of all the problems that we have, in spite of all the sicknesses that we carry, it is not easy to say, trust me, I'm not just saying it because I've never been sick <laughs> or never had problems. Quite a few. <laughs> But, but, but when we trust the Lord and when we worship him and focus on him in spite of all of this, the enemy can be as close as right here by me, but he is paralyzed. Say paralyzed. paralyzed. He cannot do anything in my life because I am worshiping my king. And in the presence of my king, nobody moves, not even me. Be still and know that I am God. There's so much in that. Oh. So Esther was just a tiny little orphan that fulfilled her destiny. Fulfilled her destiny. Do you have a destiny? Do you know your destiny? Mmm, that's a tricky one. Don't answer that. <laughs> Think about it. Pray about it. Focus and meditate on that. Study it. What is our destiny? Is it to go around the world, which could be just your neighbor, and preach the gospel and make disciples? Maybe. Okay, I want to share a few. I want to share a few testimonies. I do want to show you a video. I believe it will play, but I don't know. At, at the end, maybe, because you won't understand it unless they tell you a little bit about it. Our ministry is is uh, to orphans and prostitutes and abandoned babies. And ministry really kind of. Uh, I don't know. I never used to call it ministry. It was just my lifestyle. I started doing this when I was 11. So I've been doing this for a while. And and I started at first by myself because I just felt like I didn't meet in my life. But then the Lord changed it and it flowed. And then now we have 400 ministers and it's a ministry and it's got a name and it's just wow. But it's still a lifestyle for me. It's one at a time. It's one by one. It's ministry to the kids. We bring we bring the word, the truth to them. That's our main goal. That's our main focus. We want them to know how much the Father loves them. Even if they're going to die tomorrow, that's all we want them to know. Your Father loves you. Many of them do die, and it's a really difficult time for, for us. That's why I talk about our problems. We don't often know how to deal with that. We have lots of questions. And we, we, we find babies in dumpsters and in manholes and have to go into that and st maybe spend the night or sleep at a dump. Have you ever done that? That's, it's not super exciting, but when you see a fruit, when you see a fruit, when you see the fruit, it's worth it. Yeah. Say, it's worth it. It's, it's worth, worth it. it. It's worth it. Yeah. And he is so, so onto this. He loves doing that. He said it in his word that orphans and widows, he's their father. And I mean, if we don't get that, then we need to read it a little more careful, you know? Because it's very clear to me that if he says, I am the father to the orphans and to the widows, that means that, that he is. Yeah. <laughs> it's as simple as that. And if we can't do that, then we, we maybe need to rethink our Christianity. When we said yes to God, that, that simply means that that we, we agreed to give up our old lifestyle. We, we agreed to give up our own self. And so when we minister to these kids, there is, I'll tell you a little bit about our system. It's slightly different. It's still communism, mind, weird mentality. Very often people ask, Max, what's the biggest thing? the biggest problem you guys face in your ministry. And I always say that it's mentality. It's really difficult to fight that. It is really difficult to change it. It doesn't change overnight. The law can be canceled overnight. The, the things could, you know, building could be built overnight. Things could be done like that. But the mindset, the mentality, people are used to living in this way. And they're not going to change because they're used to this. 
So the mentality is still where orphans are being neglected, thrown out, abandoned, and, and they keep having them because they get money for it. So, so orphans, having more orphans, is this cycle that, that I believe is gonna be broken very soon. And so our system is that when there is an abandoned baby in the hospital, it begins in the hospital, the, the abandoned baby by, by a young girl, I don't know, 15, 16, whatever. She's an orphan, she came out of an orphanage, she you know, had a boyfriend that she hated, got pregnant, then she hated even more, then she hates the baby because the baby looks like the boyfriend. So she gets rid of this baby at the hospital. The baby doesn't have a name, the baby doesn't have identity for a while. The baby's sick, there is no budget, there is no diapers, nobody holds, nobody visits because it's not their baby. It's an orphan baby, nobody wants to be around. And so we go into the hospitals, we pray, we give them diapers if we can, we give them formula, we hold them because their muscles need to be developed. We do all the things that parents should do. Mm -hmm. All the things that Father God would, would do if we weren't here. But he likes to do it through us because then we are witnesses. Mm -hmm. Would you like to be a witness of what he does? Yes, yes, yes. yes. I want to witness everything he does. As much as he does, I want to be there. I want to do the it. Meat, meat market, or what is it that you want me to do? <laughs> I want to witness what he's doing. And he's he's so happy to, to use us, to use our hands, our feet, our mouths, and they're on the not our brains. <laughs> Unless we have lost our brain to gain his. Amen. Amen. To gain his, and so so in the hospital when we start to minister to those babies, somebody asked me to share a great testimony that was just recently, before I came here about three weeks ago. We were doing ministry at the hospital with a band of babies, a three of us, a team, who went to hold these babies, and it was just such a great time. Uh, you know, you pray, you worship, you sing, you laugh with the babies, but there's one baby that was born really young and early, two months earlier than than he was supposed to. And he was really sick, he had a heart condition. They put the baby in the incubator. He was really, really tiny, really, really weak. And they didn't know if he was gonna make it. And nurses don't really care. They hooked it all up. So we're there just praying and worshiping and walking from one room to another because there's many. And so holding, uh, everybody's holding different babies. There's three of us, me and two other ministers. And then the power goes out at the hospital. Well, just so you understand, our hospitals are slightly different from yours. <laughs> or very different. They they don't have a what's it called? Generators. Generators. Thank you. You were just you didn't want to tell the story. <laughs> <laughs> are you all prophetic or something? <laughs> so so you know there there are no generators. So there was no way for any nurses and doctors are just running down the hall and I'm grabbing somebody. They're like I don't have time. And I'm like, wait, there's a baby in the incubator. Can you do something? They're like, well, we can't do anything. There are no generators. There's other patients that are sick. I don't know what to do. So she ran. And finally, we got another nurse. She said, just we have to take him to another hospital. I said, well, give us the ambulance. We'll go. And she said, we don't have an ambulance. I said, what? And she said, well, we do, but it doesn't have gas. So, so there's no gas in the ambulance. She said, well, if that's okay, I could take, I could take the baby with me in my car. And she said, yeah, go ahead. So the two ministers and I, we grab the baby and we go to another hospital, which is an hour away. We get there a little earlier, you know, you break a few rules. <laughs> and so we, we made it. But the whole time we're crying, we're praying, and we're really believing that the Lord knows what he's doing. Because he does. And very often, do you guys believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes. Yeah, okay. Well, did you know that, that our God is, when it says that he is our provider, he's not just our financial provider. Mm -hmm. When he was, Jesus, when he was leaving this world, he provided something for us. Yeah. Someone, his name is Holy Spirit. Yeah. So that we don't feel like we're all alone. <laughs> and so that he just does what, he, what we need. He's like a maid, really. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, you've been adopted. If you, re if you have a revelation that you have been adopted by the Father of God, then you understand that he has all the best for you. Yes. And the Holy Spirit does whatever you ask. Isn't that nice? <laughs> so the Holy Spirit is here really for us. 
He's here for us. So he, Jesus left us somebody that does everything we ask for. He spoils us. And he really loves us. And yet he disciplines us. <laughs> so he gave us the Holy Spirit so that we would live in victory. Say amen. amen. When I have the Holy Spirit within me, when I have Jesus within my heart, I live in victory automatically. The battles are automatically won, all of them, because I'm no longer fighting them. <coughs> I'm not the one to fight them. I don't work out. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't matter how much education or degree or knowledge you have, all of that, he says, forget it. Come to me as you are and come to me hungry, which means that forget everything you know Come to me empty so I could fill you up. Wow, I want to be hungry all the time. Hungry in the spirit. Because in the natural, we get fat. <laughs> but, but you guys, in the hospital, when we came to the hospital, to the, uh, the other hospital, we came out and we, we were crying. We were crying. We were praying in the spirit a lot. The whole trip, we were just praying. And we didn't know how to pray. When, when you're holding this this tiny little baby that has a heart condition that could die, it, it, you just don't know how to pray. We prayed and we said, God, you promised, you promised, you promised. That was all we were saying. Holy, holy, you promised. And then in the spirit, we were praying in tongues. So when we came out of the car, the baby was dead. And we ran into the hospital. We ran upstairs. They were already waiting for us. They had the incubator ready and plugged in. We put the baby in. They're trying to do all kinds of stuff. The baby's dead. And they they, they, they hooked him up to a bunch of stuff, and then they unhooked it, and they claimed the time of death. And then they left the room, and they said, you can say your goodbyes. And we, we, we stood, and we cried, and we couldn't even pray at that time. We had questions. Have you ever had questions? He wants to answer them. He wants to answer them. So we stood and we just cried. We cried and we stood and then we prayed. It was such a weird feeling where you know this is over, but at the same time your spirit is still praying. And we were we were not saying goodbye. We were praying. We were in that mood. We were t turned on. For 40 minutes we prayed. We ran, we cried and prayed, and then they said goodbye. No, we were still praying. Amen. For two hours we were praying. And then the baby started to breathe. Wow. Wow. Right. Can you get more excited? This is your, this is your little brother. Yeah. And, and he started to breathe. And we're, we're crying, but a different kind of crying. So we're getting nurses, we're getting doctors, and you know, seven of them came in eventually, and, and they're trying to figure it all out, hooking him up to stuff, checking his heart, and his heart is completely healed. Woo! that are not answered, but but I, I, I want to get excited.